This is the Techologic DC-1, a dual-lens camera giving 1080 HD resolution at 30 frames per second, 720 for 60 frames per second, with a claimed battery life of up to two and a half hours and remote to ensure you're always in control. But is it any good? Down in the dirt. So what is in the box? It comes nicely boxed and comes with everything you need to get going, except a memory card, but you can buy these on a website when you order. In the box you get the camera, stylish looking, metal construction and very lightweight, only 104 grams. It's got a weather tight micro USB port for charging or for powering via an external battery pack, plus access to the reset button. And on the other side is the SD card port, again accessed via weather tight seal. The DC-1 is very simple to use with only one small button to control everything which even vibrates to let you know you've pushed it. Also included in the box are all the bits and bobs you need to mount it to your lid. Included is the cradle which is rubber lined to aid stabilisation and connects to all standard GoPro type mounts via an articulated arm. Some 3M adhesive pads to stick them out to your helmet, you get both curved and flat mounts. A micro USB cable for charging. A fully weatherproof cable is available if you want to power the camera via an external power pack whilst riding. An Allen key and screws to secure the camera to the mounts, plus cycle helmet strap and elasticated riding hat strap to accommodate all sorts of mounting options. These Techologic cameras, they sort of originated in the equestrian market. From there, they kind of went across onto pedal cyclists and now they're pushing into the motorcycle market. The DC-1 also has a remote which comes with a Velcro strap. The remote is quite handy, it allows you to take pictures and manually lock any files there and then whilst you're recording. And lastly, you even get a wee branded bag to keep everything in and a cleaning cloth for the lenses. So, how do you actually mount the camera to your lid? Funny you should ask. The mounting cradle is easily loosened via a screw to let you push the camera into place with the rubber lining helping anti-vibration. Lightly tighten the screw and loosen off the articulated arm on the side to allow full movement of both the camera and the cradle, allowing you to align it up as required on your helmet and tighten up later. Next, take your lid and lay it on its right hand side. If you mount the camera on the other side of your helmet, you'll need to take your hand off the throttle and more importantly, away from the front brake every time you want to operate it. Now this shouldn't actually be an issue because these cameras are designed to just be switched on when you first get on the bike and then left until you finished riding. So you could wear it on either side if you wanted. I use these rubber helmet maintenance rings to help prevent any damage or marking to my lid. Affiliate links are given for these in the vid description if you want one. Now place the camera and mount on your lid and move it around until you find the best location for your particular helmet. You can see here I've had to reposition my comms unit to get the best place for the DC-1. Next ensure the helmet is clean and dry and select whether a flat or curved mounting plate is best for you. Attach to 3M sticky pad by peeling off the yellow paper and attaching to the mounting plate. Then peel the red film off and press it firmly onto your lid in the desired spot. Now leave for 24 hours. Well, that's what they always say, but we're busy people, aren't we? And we just want to get out and ride. Seriously though, folks, it is advisable to let the glue set for as long as you possibly can before you attach the camera and head off out on a ride. Now the camera is on your lid, you'll need to align it properly, so download the video app onto your phone, follow the on-screen instructions to connect to your camera, and now you can play with the camera alignment to get the best view for you, then secure all the bolts and screws. Job done. One thing that I've noticed about it already, folks, is when you start it, there's a button somewhere here. That button is quite hard to feel once you have your gloves on, and especially once your hands are cold. The good thing about it is when you activate the camera, you switch it on or you switch it off, it automatically will start recording when you switch it on, and it vibrates pretty profusely. To switch on, simply push and hold the button for three seconds, and it will vibrate once. The problem is, I don't think there's any difference between like the vibration you get when you turn it on and the vibration you get when you turn it off. Yeah, I was wrong again, folks. There is. You get one vibration when you switch on, and then to switch off, push and hold the button again for three seconds, and you'll get a series of vibrations like this. It's almost like they thought of everything.
If you look down here, I've got the remote sort of wrapped around the handlebars. The problem with the remote straight away is the strap isn't big enough to go around your jacket. That's something that Drift did as well. It's really annoying with their new little remote. It's more like a wristwatch, which is no use because once it's on your wrist and you put your jacket on, you cover the remote. It is Velcro though, so you know it, it gives you a fair bit of freedom as to where you can strap it to. Another issue with it is if you look at that remote, you don't know what's going on with it, do you? It's not like the old Drift Ghost S. When that was on, it would flash green. And then when it started recording, it would flash red. So you had a visual indicator there as to what state the camera was in. There's not on that, so that would be really handy, Techologic, if you could do something like that. The remote will allow you to take pictures through the camera, stills, and it will also allow you that big red button that will mark the footage, so if something happens that you want to keep note of, you can push that and it will mark the video for you, so you can find it easy later on. I'm just going to let the Techologic run, and we'll see how long the battery lasts, because it wasn't recording when I gave you all that spiel before. Like I said folks, there's no way of knowing if that's on or not once you're riding. You literally have to switch it on, feel it vibrate, and then leave it. That's what my missus does. <laughs> <laughs> children, they're children. So, battery life, how long do you get? Well, they state around two and a half hours when you're filming at uh, 1080, 30 frames per second. Initially, I was only getting about half an hour, 45 minutes. Did it a few times, couldn't figure out why. Had a chat with Techologic. It turns out if you charge off of the computer, the camera will not fully charge. So it cannot be charged off the computer. You have to use all only the power lead supplied by Techologic and you have to plug it in to a USB mains adapter. So it's got to be charged off of the mains, not off of a power pack or the computer. You can charge the camera off of a power pack and use it on the go. And with that, you'll get up to about four and a half, five hours worth, which will easily cover a full day's ride. So what about the footage itself? What did you think of those examples? This footage here is from quite an overcast rainy day in Wales, also known as a Welsh summer. And to be honest, I don't think this camera copes too bad with it. There's no point in comparing the DC-1 with the likes of a GoPro, folks. It is not an action camera. These are dash cam camera systems. They're literally, turn them on, leave them, forget about them whilst you're riding, and they are just in case anything happens whilst you're on the bike. They're there purely for insurance purposes, and they do that job very well. Sound. Don't follow Matt, whatever you do. Sound isn't great, got to admit, it is pretty iffy on that. However, for purely a video record of what's gone on front and rear, this is a very neat system which can be easily interchanged amongst different bikes. So for people like me, when I'm jumping on lots of different bikes, it's actually a really good system if I didn't have my GoPros running all the time. 
if it's just for your own bike, hand on heart, I would go for something like the Innov K3 or the K5. My first choice would be the K5 just because you get far better picture quality. And the app is much more user friendly because of that faster Wi-Fi on the K5. However, the K3 does a great job itself. Back to the Techologic, well for 180 quid folks, it's really not a bad little fail safe camera just to have on your lid for peace of mind. I'd suggest it's probably not the way to go if you're looking for footage to use on YouTube. However, for purely insurance purposes, then the Techologic DC1, it's a cracking effort. If this sounds like something you'd fancy, check out the description down below. There are affiliate links there to get yourself a Techologic DC1. Again, I do make a little slice out of that. So if you use the link, you'll be helping the channel too. Right, folks, I know what you're thinking. This bloke's sponsored by Techologic in Enough. Yes, I am. However, I'll tell you, like I told them, I will only ever give you my 100% honest feedback on a product you'll get everything warts and all and hopefully that's what i've given you in this all right folks hope you found this one useful check out this vid on the innov k5 system as an alternative to the dc1 i will be doing a review of the Techologic xv1 so stand by for that all right folks get on out there keep doing your thing look after those that you love but most importantly most importantly live your life Woo -ha!